Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share a quick unboxing and first look at the Logitech G560 gaming speaker system. At roughly $200, US, this 2.1, 240-watt Bluetooth-enabled speaker system looks decent on paper. But what separates it from the rest is that it has Logitech's light sync on board. In other words, there is RGB lighting on both the left and right channel that uses Logitech software to sync up with any other RGB Logitech peripherals you might have, as well as utilize profiles for gaming. So if you play Battlefield 1, uh, CSGO, the lighting on the speakers will react to your in-game play. That's my best way of putting it. Now, not all titles support it, but still, it is a work in progress and has been since its launch several months back. In addition to that, when you're watching regular content, movies, YouTube, whatever it may be, LightSync will also try to adapt to that and complement whatever is on screen. Something similar to this did exist years ago with Philips. Maybe it didn't work out because I haven't seen it since, but that is what makes the G560 interesting. The other thing is that Logitech really has not made any speakers specifically for gaming. They've made a lot of great speakers, but not ones for gaming. So this is a themed unit, no question about it. And at $200, I think it does compete with just about everything else in its class. Take a quick look at the box. There you have it. And I'm gonna get it out of the box because you did listen to me for a minute already plus. And I wanna show you exactly what we're working with here. See if this will release. There we go. And again, this is exciting to me because Logitech really hasn't given me a reason to look at any of their speakers in a very long time. And frankly, if the, uh, if the RGB lighting on this, the light sync is a bust, I'll probably you know, lose interest very quickly. Instructions right there. Let's get to what's actually inside of here. First things first, it looks like these are the satellites. was attached to something. Let's take a look. Of course, what's underneath this is the subwoofer. There we go. All right, so we've got our left and right channel right there, as well as what appears to be Logitech's signature USB uh, connection. You'll see this with a lot of their mice. Here we have it with the actual speaker system. Put that aside and let's take a look at just what one of these channels looks like. I can separate the tape if it permits me. There we go. Come on. Now you may notice immediately that these look a lot like Logitech's existing Bluetooth uh, speakers for PC use, and that's because they do. Um, on the back, you can see the lighting right there. So not only, you're gonna wanna have these up against a wall, which I will, and then in addition to that, it'll let light come through on the stand side, so it'll shed some of that light to the front of the speaker as well. Now all, You've got connection, uh, or excuse me, controls right here, uh, volume up and down. I believe that's it. And this is power, I believe. So let's go ahead and move on. I don't think there's, I think there's a wall wart in here as well. Or it may not be. The wall wart may just be on the subwoofer itself. Yep, these are just connectivity cables for the subwoofer. And here is the sub. Let's see, I may just, let's get rid of the box altogether, shall we? Let's do that. This way I can actually show you the product without damaging my own equipment. 
No pun intended there. Let's see if I can get this speaker out of here. It is very tight, the sub. There it is. I'm glad I decided to do that off camera as much as some of you may have enjoyed it. And here comes the styrofoam removal. Sorry it's off camera, but you'll at least finally see this, which is my intended purpose. And there you have the actual subwoofer, which has plenty of branding, the G on the top. And then, of course, a depiction of light sync at work. So again, just mentioning the 240 watts, the Bluetooth. Uh, I didn't mention the DTSX certification, but you've got game-driven RGB lighting. And I think it should be interesting. I mean, we'll see. I'll spend some time with it. Of course, I will do a follow-up. Let all of you know whether or not this is actually worthwhile. I think the price does need to go down a little bit, but, a little bit, but then again... As I mentioned earlier, when you compare it to the competition, $200 seems reasonable in just about every way, shape, and form, creative. You're spending $300 for their soundbar solution. And I'm trying to think of other competing products, but there really just isn't that much. I mean, you have Razor's speakers. They don't have the punch. They don't have the 240 watts. They do have RGB. But to me, this is the best of basically everything. But pretty much sums things up. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them, hit that like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.